So welcome to the walkthrough of the primary writing project for this class, um, Psych 320 IO Psychology. So basically the purpose of this assignment is to apply what you're learning from this class. It is to provide a opportunity for you to apply the skills that are being learned through the readings and through the lecture, but also to make it to where it's manageable. Um, and that's why it's broken into four parts. So there is four sections, project one, two, three, and four. However, when you are done with these, it's going to be one larger paper. So each section is adding upon what the previous section has done. So I want to just kind of walk through this um, to hopefully answer any questions you might have as you're looking at this. Um, do recognize that again, it's a four week class. So pretty much each part of the, each one of these sections is going to be due approximately each week. Um, so the objective of this project is to familiarize students with the methods and application of industrial organizational psychology. So whenever you're working on any of the sections, you want to be asking yourself, am I actually applying the theories and the techniques that have been taught in this class? Because that's one of the primary things I'll be grading for on these assignments. So let's just take an overview. Um, so the task is to complete four short papers. Um, taken together, they'll con constitute a kind of scientist practitioner approach to an organizational problem. So we've been talking in the lectures, if you've already been listening, um, but we will if you haven't, um, about the fact that IO psychology is about the application of the science of psychology to the practice of human resources and organizational decision making. Um, so the first part of this project, section one, will involve describing an organization and clearly defining a problem within that organization. Um, so for the purpose of this assignment, you actually get to draw from a fictional organization from TV, movies, or literature. Um, so for instance, you could choose the Empire from Star Wars. You could take um, the tech company from Office Space. Uh, you could take uh, Dunlin Mifflin uh, paper supplies from the TV show Office Space, or off uh, The Office. Anyway, so you get to choose that, but within this first section, you're basically just going to describe the organization as if I had not seen the TV, movie, or literature you're taking it from, which is about a 50-50 shot, depending on what you choose, but also describing a specific problem with the organization, um, so something the organization definitely needs help with. The second section will consist of you actually researching the topic and the problem and how it has been examined and addressed in the past. This is going to be more of the scienti scientist part of the scientist practitioner model. You're going to actually look up empirical research articles and examine what has been researched as far as this problem. So, for example, if you're looking at an organization that has a problem with job satisfaction, you would look up um, various research articles that have examined how do you increase or how do you change an organization to increase job satisfaction. If it's a training issue, you're going to look into how can skills be better trained in the workplace. If it's a diversity issue, you're going to look at research articles that have looked how to improve diversity. If it's a leadership issue, you're going to re research articles that have looked at how to improve leadership, groups and teams, etc. The third part of this project, so the third paper, will be focusing on proposing a half-day training program intended to correct the problem. Um, so again, depending on what you're choosing, it may be a training program for the entire organization. It may be a training program just for lower-level employees or entry-level employees. It may be focused at only groups and teams. It may be focused at leadership. But you're basically going to, based on the research you reviewed, propose a training program to correct the problem. And this definitely needs to be informed from your review of the literature. The final section will involve you proposing and developing a plan to evaluate the training program's effectiveness. So again, um, in IO psychology, it's not just about applying what we know from psychology. It's also testing what we do in organizations. And that's mainly the main focus on that section four. Okay, so let's talk about each section. So the first one is due 11.59 um, p.m. online through Blackboard. So you'll submit this file on December 17th. Um, it should open with a cover page with your name, the name of the project, and the date. Uh, please place page numbers at the upper right corner of each page, and these papers should be in APA style. You want to introduce your topic and describe the source of your organization, so name and medium. So you could say, for example, the Empire from the Star Wars film, or you could say um, uh, the Federation from Isaac Asimov's Federation novels. Um, so anyway, then you're going to fully describe the organization as if your reader was not familiar with it. So what's the organizational structure? Who's in charge? How big is it? Um, what's the management structure like? How many levels are there of that management? What is the purpose of the organization? So what are they trying to achieve? What does it do? What does it do, do as far as 
profit. Um, what is it actually producing? You want to discuss the organization from an open systems framework. So this is discussed in the first two lectures and also um, within the book. But what are the inputs of the organization? In other words, what does it take in? What's the throughput? So what is the process of it converting those inputs into outputs? What does it produce? How does it gather feedback? And also, what is the environment exists in? And it's a good idea to kind of think about the problem that you're wanting to address in this organization. At what level is it? Is it a problem with bringing things in the organization? Inputs. Is it a problem with what they do once they're when they're actually trying to produce whatever they produce? Throughputs. Is it a problem with the actual production? Outputs. Is it a problem with feedback? So how it actually adjusts through that process? Or is it even a problem with um, environment? So for instance, uh, an example of an organization with an environmental issue might be British Petroleum. Um, their inputs, throughputs, and outputs didn't change. However, when they had the big spill down in the Gulf of Mexico, the environment that that company was now functioning in was very different, and they had a problem. And that problem was actually public relations, um, how the people, how people viewed that organization. And they did do interventions to try to basically convince people that they were doing all they could to fix the problem. So, identify a problem that could be addressed through training and intervention within the organization described. Make sure to support the existence of that problem with examples from the source material. At what level of the open systems model does this problem exist? So you don't need to start talking about how you're going to fix it, but you definitely need to identify it at this point. Give me an idea of where it is in the organization, and give me some examples from the organization that illustrate how this is a problem. So I've got some sample problems um, uh, included here, so they could be business ethic issues, um, cross-cultural or diversity training issues, leadership issues, teamwork issues, time management, um, conducting performance evaluations, anger management, workplace violence, but there's definitely some others. Um, if you have any questions about this, shoot me an email, give me your idea, and I'll let you know um, as quickly as I can what I think of it. The second part of the project is due again um, by 11.59 uh, mid, uh, p.m. on December 23rd, a week later. Again, I need a cover page, same name of your project, your date, uh, and your name, just so I know who it's from. Again, it needs to be submitted online. Um, this time you're going to select a training topic, so you're going to refine from that first project into the second project, the second section, um, what is the actual issue that you want to look at, um, and how is it relevant to today's workforce? Um, is, it, is, is it an area that needs addressed in your company you've chosen to describe, and is general enough to, and relevant enough for a large number of employees of the company, if not all organizations, or all of the uh, people in the organization? So basically, you want to think of a problem that is affecting the organization fairly large scale. So you want the problem not to be, you know, an employee needs to be fired or one employee needs training. It should be something that's going to be at a more organizational level. The reason that you want to find something at a more organizational level is it's going to be hard to find any research articles on how to um, impact a single employee. Generally speaking, most research in uh, industrial organizational psychology is focused more at the organizational level. So, you want to find at least three articles, and you can definitely find more, that discuss the topic in sufficient detail to give you a clear look and idea of what the specific issue is and how you should address it in training. So, I only have three articles here um, because I'm really wanting you to find articles that are fairly close to your problem. So, this isn't a reference of just referencing the textbook about open systems models. This is really trying to find three articles that have looked pretty closely at what you are wanting to look at. So if you're wanting to look at, for example, diversity training, they should be specifically about a very clearly defined type of diversity training and then the study of wh whether or not it was effective and how to make it effective. You're wanting to find articles that are going to help you design your training. Um, this section should include an introduction, um, so basically introducing the problem and basically defending why it's a problem in the organization again. So again, it's a transition from your first section. Um, and then it should be a summary of each of these articles. Um, you should let me know what the article looked at, who they looked it at. So was it a U.S. sample? Was it a working sample? Was it students that they used? What kind of training did they use and what did they find? And you're definitely wanting to give me enough information that when you design your training in this third section of this project, you'll be able to reference those articles to tell me this is why I'm creating the training the way I am. Um, the final of this section should actually end in a summary specifically stating how the information from those articles will be utilized in your training design.
Now, since you're actually drawing from research articles in this one, you can definitely have references in any of the sections. So, for example, in your section one, if you want to talk a little bit about um, additional theories, if you want to bring in some research, if you're talking about diversity training, for instance, and you want to actually cite a newspaper article that suggests that most Fortune 500 companies are using diversity training, you can definitely do that. And if you do, you should have a reference section. But you definitively must have a reference section with the second part. Um, so each one of those reference uh, articles you reference has to be cited within your text and listed fully in APA style in the reference section. The, sound, the third part is due on January 2nd. Um, so again, cover page, name, name of the project, and the date. Um, once again, turn on a line. And in this part, part you're going to develop a half-day training program. Um, you want to outline a training program on your topic that could be completed in about four hours. You want to discuss the training methods that you'll use. So again, you want to describe it in enough detail that I understand what your training session is doing and how. You describe any exercises, simulations, role plays, and lectures, um, or other training methods you'll use. Um, they don't have to be fully developed. In other words, you don't have to give me actually handouts or extra materials, but they should be defined and described in your article enough that I could have a reasonable, decent chance of being able to come up with something close to what you're intending if I was to create the training. Um, they should definitely entail what they'll entail and also make sure I understand how it addresses an important aspect of your topic. So again, you're wanting to tie these back into that literature review. Make sure to describe what type of practice, active learning, or feedback you're going to incorporate into your training. And by the time this is due, we'll have already covered how to do training in organizations. So um, I think it's about the fifth or sixth lecture. We're covering training in organizations, and we're going to talk about how to do active practice. We're going to talk about the feedback and how feedback can influence training. You're going to want to incorporate what you've learned in those lectures into this section. Make sure to describe how you've utilized the methods and theory discussed in your lit review, Project 2, Section 2, or the sec second section in your training. Additionally, describe the primary expected outcomes of the training. In other words, how are you going to determine if the training worked? You don't know, go need to go into detail yet, but is the purpose of the training to reduce discrimination? Is the purpose of the training to increase job satisfaction? What is the broad outcome of the training? Finally, you need to include an outline listing the amount of time devoted to each topic and exercise and issue. You may include a 15-minute break in your outline. So basically, you need to outline how that four hours is going to be used. The final section of this paper, section four, is due again at 11.59 p.m. January 8th, um, close to the end of the class. Once again, it needs a cover page, again the title, and again your name. Again, it's being submitted online. And this is the shorter section. Basically, this is just wrapping it all up. You need to describe how you'll assess the levels of competency employees have, have in your topic prior to the training and how you'll measure improvement after your training. So you basically need to let me know how are you going to measure where the employees that are going to take your training are at prior to the training and how you're going to measure if they improved based on the training. Now, again, we're going to talk about different methods in this class. Um, prior to when this is due, there'll be a lecture on how we actually do um, assessment of training and the different techniques. One of the specific things we're going to talk about in those lectures is Kirkpatrick's taxonomy. And you definitely need to um, uh, refer to, to Kirkpatrick's taxonomy in this section and let me know what criteria you're assessing and what spe specific methodology you're going to do to test positive transfer of training. So again, a lot of these terms may be new to you. You may be asking yourself, um, Kirkpatrick's taxonomy, methodology, transfer of training. We will be talking about all these terms prior to this paper being due. Um, Transfer to training really refers to how the likelihood or how much of the, what you learn in a training session, like a four-hour session that you're proposing, actually ends up being utilized in the real workforce. The methodology, that I'm referring to, how are you actually going to test? Are you going to do pre-tests and post-tests? What statistical methodology are you going to use to test this? And Kirkpatrick's taxonomy is a list, if you will, of different ways to actually assess whether training is successful. Okay, so project reports. Each of these four reports need to be typewritten. Obviously, you're turning it in online. I would prefer them being in Word document. They do need to be APA style. If you're not familiar with APA style, I strongly suggest that you look at the website I've listed here. Um, 
uh, basically, it's a very user-friendly tutorial on APA style. Um, at the very least, look up some sample papers and try to make sure that your paper looks like an APA paper. A couple of the major things that really is the hallmarks of APA is your paper should definitely be double-spaced. It should be in 12-point Times New Roman font, um, and that should be done throughout. Also, if you're using Word, Word has a tendency to include automatic extra spaces between paragraphs. Um, you should definitely look into turning those functions off because that's not APA style. Um, for your 3 plus references, they have to be scientific peer-reviewed journals. Those are the only ones acceptable. I've given some examples of acceptable journals. Um, the general rule of thumb, if you're wanting to use an article and you're not sure, you can always email me and I'll let you know if it's okay or not. But what you're looking for to find out if it's a peer-reviewed journal is a couple of things. First, the author should be clearly listed after the title of the paper. Second, it should have an abstract. Um, Peer-reviewed journals almost always will have an abstract that basically describes the study. And this is one of the ways to really determine if you're looking at a peer-reviewed journal versus just an article about science. Articles in Discovery and Psychology Today and Scientific American usually will not have abstracts. The final thing is, on that first page, not only should there be the authors listed and the abstract, the author's affiliation should be listed. So it should say where they work or who they're with. So what university they're at or what organization they are. And there should be contact information, how to actually get a hold of the author. All of those are indicating a scientific journal. So if you have all of that, authors listed, abstract, contact information, there's a good chance that is actually a peer-reviewed scientific article. Again, if you have questions, go ahead and just send me your citation, and I'll let you know if it's acceptable. I hope this has answered all your questions. Um, once again, I think at the end you're going to find this a fairly rewarding process, um, as this paper has been designed to, as I said, be broken up into parts to where it can be looked at um, easily, but also each part is also going along with approximately what we've covered. Um, so we're going to be talking about broad organizational problems in the first couple of lectures, which leads easily into section two, or section one. Section two, you'll be actually conducting your research um, and lit review while we're actually going over a lot of the other parts of IO psychology. As you actually design your training during that week is also when we're going to be discussing how you design training in organizational settings. And finally, when you're wrapping up this project and writing that final section is when we're also going to be discussing how to measure and actually determine if training has been successful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I hope this has been helpful.